houses, singing the sweet war songs. Oh, do you hear, my black brother? Telling us to prepare for the greatness of the time. Black brother! Black brother, hey. <laughs> Peter, what's the matter with you? You got company, girl. Won't the Lee get down off that table and stop acting like a fool? He's had a little to drink. I don't know what her problem is. Look, honey, we are going to be two here. We are not going to be idiots. Don't check each other. What in the name of the hell? You done lost your natural mind. Look at your head. What have you done to your head? I mean, your hair. Nothing, except cut it off. Now that's the truth. It's what ain't been done to you. You expect that boy to go out with you with your hair all nappy like that? Well, that's up to George, if he's ashamed of his heritage. Oh, don't be so proud of yourself, Biddy, because you look eccentric. How can something that's natural be eccentric? That's what eccentric means, being natural. Get dressed. I don't like that, George. Why must you and your brother make an argument out of everything people say? Because I hate assimilationist Negroes. Can either one of you tell me what assimil whoever means? Oh, it's just a college girl's way of calling people Uncle Tom's. But that isn't what it means at all. Well, what does it mean? <sighs> it means someone who is willing to give up his own culture and submerge himself completely in the dominant and, in this case, oppressive culture. Oh, dear, 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 here we go. A lecture on the African past, on the great West African heritage. In one second, we're here all about the great Ashanti empires, the great Songhai civilizations, the great sculpture of Benin, and then some poetry on the Bantu. And the whole monologue would end with the word heritage. Let's face it, baby. Your heritage is nothing but a bunch of raggedy-ass spirituals and some grass huts. Grass huts? See that? You are standing there in your splendid ignorance talking about a people who were the first to smell iron on the face of this earth. While the Ashanti were performing surgical operations when the British were still tattooing themselves with blue dragons. Have a seat, Joe. Warm, ain't it? I mean, for September. It's like they always say about Chicago, whether if it's too hot or cold, just wait. And it'll change. <laughs> Shit's got to do with all those bombs people keep setting up. Would you like a nice cold beer? No, thank you. I don't care for beer. I hope she hurries up. Oh, what time's the show? It's an 8.30 curtain. But that's Chicago, though. In New York, standard curtain time is 8.40. Oh, you get to New York a lot? A few times a year. That's nice. I've never been to New York. New York ain't got nothing Chicago ain't except a bunch of hustling people all squeezed together being Eastern. Oh, you've been? Plenty of times. Walter Lee, Plenty. Well, we got a drink in this house. Why don't you offer the man some refreshment? Man, see, they don't know how to entertain in this house. No, baby. I don't care for you. Where's mom? She ain't come back yet. <laughs> Say, man, why all you college boys gotta wear them faggoty looking white shoes? <laughs> Oh, White shoes, cold as it is. <laughs> You'll have to excuse him. No, you don't. Why are you always excusing me for? I'll excuse myself when I needs to be excused. <laughs> they look funny as hell. <laughs> bad as them, bad as them black knee socks beneath the way out of here all the time. It's the college style. Well, style, hell. Look like she got burnt legs or something. <laughs> say, 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 man. Say. How's your old man making up? You know, I hear y'all about to buy that hotel out on the drive. Shrewd move, man, shrewd move. But you know, your old man is all right. I mean, he knows how to operate, knows how to think big. But you see, I think he's running out of ideas. That's why I want to talk to him. See, man, 
I got some plans that can turn this city upside down. I mean, I think like he does. Big, invest big, gamble big, hell, lose big if you have to. Man, ain't another man on this whole south side who understands my kind of thing. You did? Tell you what, man. Me and you ought to sit down and talk together sometime. Man, I got me some ideas. Yeah, sometimes we ought to do that, Walter. Yeah? Well, whenever you get the time, I know you're a busy little boy now. Walter, please. No? I know ain't nothing in this world as busy as you colored college boys with your fraternity pants and your white shoes. Oh, Walter. I see you all the time with your books tucked under your arms, walking to your classes. <laughs> and for what? What the hell you learning over there? Filling your heads up with all that sociology and psychology. But they're teaching you to be a man, huh? They're teaching you how to take over and run this world? They're teaching you how to run a rubber plantation or a steel mill? No. Nothing but to read books, talk proper, and wear them faggoty looking white shoes. You all wiped up with bitterness, man. And you? Ain't you bitter, man? Ain't you just about had it yet? Don't you see no stars gleaming that you can't just reach up and grab? You happy? You contented son of a Walter. bitch, you happy? Bitter? Man, I'm a volcano. Bitter. I'm a giant surrounded by ants. Ants who don't even understand what the giant is talking oh, about. Walter, ain't you with nobody? No. Cause ain't nobody with me, not even my own mother. Walter, that's a terrible thing to say. Well, hey, it looks great. Girl, what is the matter with your head? I cut it off, brother. <laughs> well, I'll be dead. So that's what they mean by the African bush. Ha ha. <laughs> Let's go, George. You know something? I like it. You sure? I mean, it really is. Yes, I think so too. Oh, no. You leave yours alone, baby. You might turn out to have a pin-shaped head or something. <laughs>